Good evening. I had to do a test on Sunday. I just want to see if you guys are still with it. And it's the Happy Holidays test. Outstanding. You guys are continuing to do so. Now, here's the thing. It's still Christmas till you take the tree and the lights down. So just because after tomorrow, when you go out and you're doing the returns and the regifting and all of that stuff that's going to happen, and you go out to touch the sales after Christmas, you can still say Happy Holidays. No. You can still say Merry Christmas until you take the tree and the lights down. People will look at you a little strange because it's between Christmas and New Year's, but go for it. What other time of year are you going to be able to do that, right? Well, first off, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. God bless you for coming out on such a wet night. If it gets a little colder, we may get the white Christmas that some of us are hoping for. Yeah, that would be nice, right? Or we'll just have a wet Christmas. Uh, but either way, it's, it's good. I want to take and just let you know kind of what we're going to do for about the next hour or so is that we're going to take and have an opportunity to be able to go through the story of our Lord's birth as well as mix in and have music in between. Now that's where you guys get to participate. We won't stand up each time, but as the worship team leads us and as they bring out a song or a carol, the words are going to be up on the screen. Please feel free to just sing along. Now, if there was ever a time to sing loud... It's tonight. It's the opportunity to be able to just take and express all the joy that we have for this season, for what the Lord has brought into our lives as we would take and celebrate this, His birth, or at least the time and celebration of His birth that we've set aside in this evening. So with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's open and ask the Lord to be blessed with everything that takes place here this evening. Heavenly Father, again, we just come before you and we thank you for everything that you've provided to us, especially in the form of your Son. Oh Lord, it's not a story, it's an account. It's not what might have happened, it's what happened on a Christmas, the first Christmas, thousands of years ago. Lord, where you touched humanity by giving us your own Son, born in a way, as we'll see, so that all can approach him. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I really do love this time of year. I think I love it as much for the changing of the old to the new. And I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy, but I like the idea of being able to kind of cast off the old and get into the newness. And so, for that reason, I really enjoy the end of the year. And then, if that wasn't enough... Well then, there's Christmas. Now regardless of how you choose to celebrate Christmas, there's some that go all out. If you were to come to our house right now, it looks like a display window where snow and Santas, and we even have an abominable snowman on our fireplace. It's wonderful. Grandkids love it. But everyone, regardless of how we would choose to celebrate, needs what Christmas brings. You see, Christmas brings with it a time of great joy, a time of generosity, a time and a sense of goodwill, hope, and peace. You know, it's amazing that even at this time of the year where people may still be stressing out, where there still may be difficulties and hard things taking place, it's a little easier to say Merry Christmas. It's a le little easier to be nice in the store. I've noticed that, that people's spirits are up. Well, it's a time of year that if we will, we can take and sit around with friends and family and enjoy all that the season brings while maybe we watch It's a Wonderful Life on TV. If we've ever needed Christmas, we need it now. There's not anyone here that's not hoping that the trend of the economy going up and the gas prices going down isn't going to stick. I'm hoping so. I filled up two cars for less than the price of one the other day at Costco. It was great. We're dealing with unrest in the nation, throughout the world, differences in political ideologies and different types of means by which to rule. There's terror throughout the world that shocks the conscience of good people everywhere, and the tragic loss of innocent life brings us to the point of needing what Christmas brings more, I believe, right now than maybe ever before. So for tonight, for just the, the remainder of the of the hour, I want to encourage you to fully embrace Christmas. 
Put off the concerns of the world. If it's not off already, please reach in your bag or your pocket and put your cell phone on stun. Or just turn it off altogether for at least the next few minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Take and put the concerns of the hustle and bustle away. No thoughts of shopping. If you haven't shopped, it's too late. Whatever needs to be cooked will get cooked. Whatever isn't wrapped will get wrapped between now and, and the time that it gets open. Don't worry yet about New Year's resolutions. You've got a whole week before the diet begins. And then three weeks until it fails. You see, we can find that Christmas will solve all of our problems if we will take and embrace what it means. You see, Christmas is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. Christmas is the remembrance of the celebration of the greatest gift that was ever given. That gift is Jesus Christ. It was the prophet Isaiah hundreds and hundreds of years before the first Christmas that spoke these words. He said, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful. Oh, sometimes you hear it said, Wonderful Counselor. That's not what it is. It's Wonderful, comma, Counselor, comma, Mighty God, comma, Everlasting Father, comma, Prince of Peace. And of the increase in his government and peace, there will be no end. Well, it's because of this gift bearing the name of our Savior that I refuse to give in to those that want to take Christ out of Christmas. I don't have a whole lot of concern over those who might be offended by Christmas, by the Christ that's there, by Christ's mass, by His coming into the world. So when they say Happy Holidays, I just laugh. This isn't a happy holiday. No one ever has been saved by a happy holiday, but they've certainly been saved by the Christ of Christmas. And so for that reason, I like to make sure that I keep, not, oh, in a militant way, but in a very loving and respectful way, the season of Christmas alive in the sentiment. You see, it's not just a time to feel good about ourselves. It's not just a day off of work. It's not just a holiday. And very few that would celebrate a holiday know that it really means holy day is your, where that came from. Christmas is not about just a few days off. Christmas is about the Savior who came into the world bringing hope and salvation for mankind and the offer of eternal life to any and all who will receive it. You see, all we have to do is call Christmas what it is in order to receive what it means because in saying Christmas we have to acknowledge Christ with this in mind give me your ear and attention just for a little while longer as we recall what makes Christmas Christmas and how it all came about we find it given to us the account in Luke's gospel starting in the first chapter it says now it was the six months and this was of Elizabeth's pregnancy the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I don't know a man? And the angel answered and said that the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And it is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be 
impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. The angel then departed from her. You know, when we read this story, it just sounds so clean and simple, doesn't it? I mean, here's this young girl, Mary, just, just barely a teenager, and she's visited by an angel. That happens on a regular basis to my teenagers. <laughs> and then she's told that she's going to give birth to the Son of God. And, and after having her question answered about how this would happen, seeing that she was a virgin, she says, oh, okay, sounds good to me. Well, it's really not that simple or clean when we look at what would have been going on at the time. When we think about what was taking place and the consequences that would have come upon Mary, it was going to be messy. It was going to be scandalous. All of those that knew her, especially Joseph, was going to have a very, very hard time with this. How could anybody believe such an outrageous story? Her parents, her relatives, everyone in town was going to scoff at this impossible story of a virgin being with child. It took a tremendous amount of faith on the part of Mary and Joseph to accept what the angel was telling them and in even more faith to go along with and embrace it. But the key to understanding all that we see given here comes in the words of the angel. For with God, nothing will be impossible. It's a truth that we can still embrace for ourselves today.
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place when Canarius was governor of Syria. So all went out to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child, so that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. I can only imagine being a father. What was running through Joseph's mind as he traveled to Bethlehem? First, as a man being forced to travel 80 miles on foot for the purposes of registering to pay taxes, I'm sure he wasn't too pleased with the reason and the timing behind his, his trip. And then when we think about the condition of Mary at this point in time, ready to deliver at any moment in time, I can imagine that he had a few questions for God. Oh, questions that were along the line of questioning as to why it is that God would allow these things to happen. After all, he and Mary had gone along with this plan. After all, they had heeded what the angel had told them. They had agreed to carry out this mission on behalf of God to bring his son into the world and yet here now they've traveled to Bethlehem Mary's about to deliver and they can't even find a place that's clean to stay I think he would have thought more along the lines of looking for special treatment some sort of consideration from God that the path would have been easier it would have been smoother there would have been less rocks underneath the feet of the donkey there would have been an open door that said son of God to be born here with a neon sign that said vacancy for only one but God had a different plan it was his plan and it was unique Baby, close your eyes 
soon enough you'll save the day but for now dear child of mine oh my jesus Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, were keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with the angel a great multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. God's very own Son, born in a manger, lying in in a feeding trough. Certainly not the way I would have done it. Boy, you can imagine if it was left up to me and it was my son who was going to be sacrificed for the sins of the world, I would have brought him in in a whole different way than to bring him into a place. Well, if you've got animals, you know what happens where animals sleep, where they live, where they eat. And to announce it to shepherds, to shepherds, in that day, the lowest occupation you could possibly have, the only thing you didn't want your child to grow up and be, was a shepherd. They were considered to be the outcast. They were considered to be right up there with criminals. And yet, God chose for those that would receive the news first to be those that were considered to be the least amongst us. Oh, I think it shows and demonstrates such a great consideration on the part of God as, as it comes to this place of understanding just how meaningful His love is for each and every one of us. I'm glad that God chose the shepherds. He chose them to show us His love. You see, had Jesus been born in a palace or announced by royalty or set up as, as a celebrity, then the reality is, folks, you and me would have never been able to get close enough to him to receive the gift that he brings. But because of God's great love for you and me, he sent his son in a way that says, any and all, it doesn't matter who you are, where you have been, all are welcome in the presence of the king to receive the gift of salvation that he brings. Green. 
So it was when the angels had gone away from them, they went into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let's go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Again, I'm very thankful that you don't have to be highly intelligent to understand Christmas. As a matter of fact, it would seem that those that are amongst the smartest in our culture have more difficulty with it than do the children. You see, every child tonight, when you tuck them into bed, is going to be excited about Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. They're going to be excited and accepting and understanding that because Christmas carries the name of Christ, that there is a direct association and there's no need to separate the two from the joy of how that celebration takes place. You see, the key to understanding comes when each and every one of us take the time to come to the manger, to come to the place where the Son of God was born, was delivered by Mary to us, by God, for us, in such a way that we come and we see the proofs of God's incredible love and then as the shepherds did, we give him back all of the glory and all of the praise. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining.
Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. In the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired to them where the Christ was was to be born so they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea for it is written by the prophet but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not least among the rulers of Judah for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel then Herod when he had secretly called the wise men determined from them what time the star appear and he sent them to Bethlehem and said go 
and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. You know, it's a true statement that wise men still seek the king that was born in Bethlehem today. God rest ye merry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ our Savior Was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. And oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. And oh, tidings of comfort and joy. there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. 
And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the Christ child to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God. And he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at the things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that, this, that, the, thoughts are, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed." Simeon was given a promise that he would see the Christ child. And it says that the light would bring revelation to the Gentiles and to the glory of Israel. It was this reason for the celebration of the first Christmas, and it's the reason we celebrate tonight. It means that the light has come into the world. So this is the reason that we're here tonight. It's because long ago God kept a promise to mankind, a promise that he would send a Savior into the world. God did the impossible in order to provide a way for you and me to come to salvation. So folks, when 
we celebrate this Christmas season, remember that it was spoken by Isaiah so many years before when he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And at the end of his government, there will be none. Folks, we celebrate Christmas because Christ is the only hope that we have for the world. He is the light that has come into the world and the promise of God's great love for you and me. So as we would turn and bring a close to 2014, as we would take and reflect on this time and this season, let's do so looking forward to the coming year, not only in recognition of the Christmas that was past, but the Christmas that is yet to come. The Christ child that went on from that place, those humble beginnings, the birth in a manger, oh, to lay down his life as a sacrifice for us all. The fact that he poured out himself that we may have fellowship and union and life eternal with the Father. It means that we can have a very, very merry Christmas as long as we keep Christ in Christmas. Amen? Amen. Amen. John 3.16 says it, that God so loved the world that he gave. Well, this is a giving time of year. But what he gave to us was his only son, so that whosoever ever believes should not perish, but have everlasting life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that Christmas brings. But we thank you that we can come out and from time to time, Lord, just slow down long enough to remember that this isn't a time of just green trees with lights and ornaments and Christmas shopping and jolly red men in big suits and reindeer. And Lord, that the things that we see that the world would promote and Lord, in celebrating, but that Lord, Christmas is something that's much, much more personal. Christmas is about Christ. It's about the one that loved us when we were yet still enemies. It's about your plan of salvation for mankind. And so Lord, as we're here tonight, I would ask that for everyone that has taken this time to come to celebrate, that they would do so in knowing that it's the Christ in Christmas that brings us life. So Lord, we thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys up to a couple of more Christmas songs before we leave? Let's stand up and let's do that. All right. Let's have the lights up a little bit. This is going to hopefully cause a little bit of uh, attention your way and, and uh, hopes that you uh, clap along and enjoy. So... Sell it on the ground, I'll 
dance Jesus Christ is born Hey The shepherds fear tremble The womb of the earth Bring out the angel chorus Hail our Savior Christmas. Have a wonderful evening. Please drive safe and may the Lord, may the Lord bless and keep you. It's a white Christmas. God bless you guys.